Good afternoon, my name is Velizar Pechlivansky and you are now listening to the audio roundtable discussion on the topic MBA Entrepreneurship from the latest edition of the Access MBA Spotlight with the exclusive participation of Copenhagen Business School and ESSEC and Mannheim Executive MBA. Here with me today I have Mr. Andrea Bacinetti, who is the co-founder and COO of Voice Boxer, full-time MBA alumnus of Copenhagen Business School class of 2014, Miss Anna Christiansen, Marketing Manager MBA programs at Copenhagen Business School, Miss Natalie Kettner, Marketing and Communications Officer at SEC Executive Education, and Mr. Olivier Arnaud, CEO and founder of Moby City, ESSEC, and Mannheim EMBA class of 2011. So, if you would like to add something else to the things that I just said, uh, you can you feel free to uh, say something about yourself. Uh, you presented me really well, so uh, just a little bit more about myself. I'm from Italy. Uh, I came here to Copenhagen to for the for the MBA, like almost one year ago now. So in September uh, 2013, and during the course of the MBA, I started this company that you mentioned, so Voice Boxer, with another fellow from from, uh, from the class. Mm -hmm. And now that we graduated in, in August, now we are full time on this uh, new company. Great. And Olivier, what about you? Something more about you? Yeah, as you can hear, I'm French and um, uh, I also have the luck to give a workshop uh, in the MBA program, uh, mm -hmm. which aim to help uh, entrepreneurship. Great. Well, in this case, uh, let us all start uh, discussing a little bit more about the topic and what is, in fact, entrepreneurship. Here we have uh, two alumni uh, from the two top uh, European MBA schools who have actually studied and dealt with uh, entrepreneurship uh, on their own. And basically, uh, I would like to give me your definition uh, of what is, in fact, entrepreneurship based on your experience. Andrea? Okay, so for me, entrepreneurship and well, now being an entrepreneur means uh, having like uh, the possibility to innovate and disrupt the market, uh, creating new value and uh, innovation uh, throughout industries that are existing already. Um, also, it's, it's something like being able to think big every day, but start small. Uh, on a daily basis to reach the big dreams that you want to achieve. And uh, one also interesting thing is uh, be also ready f for pivoting uh, your ideas every day over and over. Uh, so yeah, all those things uh, contribute for to my uh, to the meaning for me of entrepreneurship and it's definitely an ex really exciting career path. Great. Th this was a really interesting answer. And um, Olivier, you're also on entrepreneurship. Do you think that um, what what is actually your idea of uh, what is entre entrepreneurship and how how is actually um, is it actually different from Andrea's point of view? No, I guess that uh, it, it, it sounds uh, exactly uh, like what uh, I could have said. Uh, for for me, um, building uh, entrepreneurship is like building new uh, profitable businesses in innovative ways. Um, and most of the people that I meet that, that uh, try to, to build their own company are looking to, to make the world a better place. And I, I guess that this is a trend that is getting really important here. Uh, and w when you start a business, you're looking uh, for a sustainable uh, business model, profitable, of course, and scalable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, in this case, uh, you have uh, both, uh, or for example, Andrea is uh, graduating this year, um, an MBA program focused uh, on the topic of entrepreneurship. I wanted to ask you how did your MBA experience shape you as entrepreneurs or uh, did it make you better entrepreneurs? Like, uh, for example, what kind of 
wallet fees or tools or resources uh, did this uh, MBA program provided you with? Let's start with uh, Andrea again. Yes. Uh, so that's an interesting question because I just read uh, two days ago an article on uh, Inc.com that was titled Why Innovators Hate uh, MBAs. And it was really interesting because uh, they were mentioning that, you know, like if you want to innovate, if you want to disrupt a market, you don't need uh, MBAs. But, uh, so people that graduate from business school, but you need uh, people that graduate from, uh, like they call it high school, so inno innovative schools. Uh, th that was really interesting. Uh, but uh, with this, this distinction in mind, I have to say that first the MBA at CBS, that was well, Copenhagen Business School, maybe also Anna uh, can uh, add something on this side. Uh, there is a strong focus on what is uh, innovation and what is entrepreneurship. So during the course of the year, we learn a lot about the, uh, what is the entrepreneurial mindset. So all the tools that you need for uh, recognizing opportunities and how to tackle them and what you exactly need in order to start a business. We had some really exciting class as well on uh, business development where we ran uh, basically a one-week accelerator program that was really helpful for me uh, as an entrepreneur and for the company as a whole plus other classes such as uh, innovation management that were all exactly focused on these topics of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, beside that, uh, I think that also uh, the normal, let's say, business schools uh, courses such as, uh, I don't know, human resources, strategy or marketing are really complementing all that background of entrepreneurship uh, in order to build a sustainable business. Um, I can give you some example, and I always use this example of human resources, which uh, a lot of times is uh, uh, like it's a course that is not like one of the most interesting courses in the MBA, according to a lot of students. However, <laughs> uh, it can give you a lot of insights on how to. Uh, define a HR strategy and how to sustain a competitive advantage in the long run from an HR perspective, which is also applicable to a uh, small enterprise growing, because uh, if you start well at the, ver at the beginning, then you will uh, have all good results uh, uh, in the long run, thanks to this knowledge. So in, I think both uh, this more entrepreneurship and innovation uh, courses and the like the more traditional management courses are really helpful for entrepreneurship. So to sum it up, the MBA program gives you, apart from the knowledge, it provides you with the pool of really experienced and like-minded individuals who are passionate about um, entrepreneurship and you actually have the opportunity to start something uh, yourself with those people and uh, like many of, of the business schools nowadays have their own accelerators or startup uh, fundings they can actually help you in realizing your dream uh, business um, Absolutely. yeah and Olivia wh what can you say uh, based on your experience how, how did, did the MBA program in a sec uh, help you become a better entrepreneur um, I came to the uh, executive MBA, SEC executive MBA, uh, because I wanted to launch my own business, and that's why I, I made the choice of the uh, SEC program. And uh, wh wh what I see uh, more and more is that people usually they they used to uh, choose an executive MBA program to get high positions in big companies, and more and more people are coming uh, to launch their own company on executive programs. Um, even if uh, nothing can prepare you to, to dive uh, in the shark tank that uh, the entrepreneurship is, uh, what was really useful for me uh, during the executive uh, MBA program at ESSEC uh, was the entrepreneurial project, which is a 12-month uh, project where you get courses uh, helping you to build your uh, business model and to ask questions about every uh, every tenants, every uh, specific aspect of your uh, entrepreneurial uh, ID. 
we get also uh, uh, great help from uh, the network um, and most of all uh, because of the uh, residencies that we, we, we had abroad of course the uh, US residency where we uh, in the entrepreneurs country so we met a lot of people launching their own business and uh, teaching us what could be helpful to launch our own business but for me uh, what was uh, the most striking uh, meeting was uh, uh, the India residencies because there we saw entrepreneurs we decided to launch their own business not for themselves but because they were proud of their country and trying really to change the way people lived in their country. So that's the kind of meeting that the kind of people when you see them it really changes the way you see uh, what entrepreneurship can be on a big scale. You also mentioned that you actually decided to go for the executive MBA of SSEC because you wanted to start your own business. But if I already own my own business, what kind of an edge this MBA would uh, in fact give me? Um, perhaps, Olivier, you can elaborate a little bit on this? Yeah, um, just a short answer, and Natalie will be able to complete uh, what I'm going to say because. Uh, uh, when, when you launch your own business, uh, you can be prepared uh, to the storm that you are going to face, meaning that you have to run, uh, let's say, 100 things per day uh, at the same time. So uh, what was useful, uh, we had a friend uh, who, who started his, his business previously to, to taking the uh, exec MBA program. And what he told me is that what was really useful is that you get time to ask important questions that you've never took time to ask before. So you have to get deep into every uh, aspect of the business. And usually when you're running your business, you're, you're just, it's a race. You know, it's, it's a kind of a marathon with sprints every day. So you don't take time to think about things, you just get them done. So that's what was really cool in the program. And I might just piggyback on what Olivia just said. Um, yeah, sometimes we have people apply to our programs who have already launched their own business. Since we have this entrepreneurial uh, track that is so strong, you might ask, okay, what added value does that bring? Well, I think it allows them to take a step back, to really look at what they're doing and perhaps reassess how they're working, their strategy, kind of tweak the specifics of their business plan. Um, some of these people also need to brush up on business fundamentals. We know often entrepreneurs have kind of what we would call an entrepreneurial spirit, which is, um, you know, they may be launched this without necessarily having um, a strong business background to begin with, and they may uh, want to come back and brush up on, on business fundamentals. Also. You know, a, a large and a very important part of doing a, an MBA program, be it a part-time or a full-time program, is of course to make important contacts. So that's undeniable. You come into a program and you're going to uh, you're going to create a real large network that that will be important in the future for you. Uh, there's also people who come in who own their own company who've had no managerial experience and they might be having, you know, managing 30 people without ever having uh, had any specific formal training and an MBA program would allow them to kind of look at how they are as a manager. Uh, we have a very strong uh, personal coaching, we have individual coaching and group coaching within our EMBA program which will allow them to kind of take a look at, at how they're managing and uh, perhaps improve that, that skill set. Great, and now that we're going more in detail uh, about the specifics of the different programs of the two schools, I would like to ask a question, Anna, uh, what makes your program different from other entrepreneur-specific MBAs, for example? Well, the uh, Copenhagen uh, MBA, the Fulton MBA program, um, we have entrepreneurship as one of our um, um, pillars of the program, so that means it's a core strength. 
Um, in addition to giving our student a very strong business foundations and skills needed to be able to recognize an opportunity like um, Andrea was, was talking about. Um, we also offer real life practical um, entrepreneurial experiences. Um, for example, we have um, something that we call the A board, the advisory board, where um, you will sit on a board of advisors for uh, small to medium um, companies um, in the region um, and you'll get experience um, acting as an advisor to them on important strategic decisions, uh, clarifying the business vision, um, creating a go-to-market plan or um, helping them um, grow, grow their market um, or grow their, their business. That means you get valuable um, entrepreneurship insight in practice. Um, Andre also mentioned the uh, MBA Accelerator, which was uh, an elective last year, uh, proving very popular with um, with that class. Um, that includes motivational lectures, but it's also it's driven by students meeting with um, mentors, um, who will then develop a business idea um, and um, turn into a business development plan. Um, we um, we have, in addition to the entrepreneurship uh, pillar, there is a leadership development um, process which um, in its journey where you discover yourself as a leader um, and um, it includes various practical experiences throughout the year. Uh, our students go away as well as part of that course um, into, um, into the wilderness to, um, to fend for themselves for, for a couple of days. Um, that also means that you get down to the very core uh, basics of, of yourself, you get to know yourself, how you act in group situations and um, how you can better yourself in a leadership or a management uh, position, which is also all to do with uh, setting up your own business and managing other people. I think I'll conclude there, but um, maybe just as an addition, um, Denmark is also a very entrepreneurial friendly country. Um, we have around 14 to 18,000 startups that are set up um, every year, and it's an easy place. It's been voted one of the easiest places in Europe to do business by the World Bank. So that infrastructure around uh, when you get out of business school, uh, it's also very much there and in place. Okay, great. Uh, in this case, um, can you perhaps uh, give me some examples of uh, successful postgraduate business ventures? Because you mentioned that, uh, for example, there are many startups uh, in Denmark as well. And um, I would also like to let's just uh, first ask uh, Natalie, for example, in uh, France. Uh, what is the situation in terms of startups? And uh, could you give some examples of really successful postgraduate business ventures? Yes, um, you know, specifically talking about our program, mm -hmm. we have quite a few people who go on to actually start the company that they developed within their entrepreneurial project. And within our program specifically, um, almost 20% of people who started a uh, a project, an entrepreneurial project within our, our uh, program went on to actually launch it. Um, there is in France more and more entrepreneurs um, who are starting their own companies. Uh, to give you some concrete examples of alumni who have gone on to create uh, businesses within, uh, you know, for after finishing our program, uh, there's a recent graduate named Julien Bouffina who decided to start a company called Pop Your Shoes, which is kind of an innovative new way of looking at uh, accessorizing shoes. Basically, the concept is that you buy uh, kind of a boot or a, a basic shoe, and then you can buy accessories that um, to go with it uh, without having to actually buy 20 pairs of shoes. You have one pair of shoe with accessories. That's That was kind of an innovative one um, that just came out uh, of our program. There's a second uh, alumni named Pascal Hippolyte Besson who began a company called Dot Screen. Uh, it's one of the leading European, um, I guess you could say, truly multi-screen agencies. Uh, that creates and designs and develops custom applications, um, uh, you know, on any internet connected mass market devices. So um, he's had quite a bit of success. He has uh, several employees working for him now. Um, the other aspect to kind of uh, touch on the question that you asked previously about what makes our uh, program different from maybe other programs within France certainly is that we have this entrepreneurial project which spans 
uh, a good portion of the 18-month program. So it lasts 12 months really giving people the time to delve into the entrepreneurial project, to work together. There's a lot of teamwork where people have to work together on these different projects. Um, have specific courses that are dedicated to uh, entrepreneurship. We also at Essex Business School have an incubator which is located at our Essex Executive Campus uh, at La Défense. Uh, so we've got uh, a group of uh, entrepreneurs who work are all working on their projects individually, but then who can share their ideas. Uh, and this, there's also what we call Essex Ventures, which is provides seed money to fledging projects. So they have uh, the opportunity to get funding for their projects from the outset. This actually brings me to um, a question that I was going to ask later but uh, you kind of uh, touched upon, uh, especially the part with the funding uh, for people with uh, business projects because nowadays it's really popular to go to either uh, websites such as Kickstarter to actually have this uh, extra financial boost to set up your um, company. So. Um, could you perhaps elaborate a little bit on this and what are the op opportunities uh, in a SEC for, um, for example, uh, they c for uh, funding um, people's business projects? Yes, so as I mentioned, we have seed funds within ESSEC Ventures, um, and basically the idea is to support projects that are coming from our out of our incubator. Um, so it's basically ESSEC Ventures is intended to support projects um, in their startup phase, with the very at the outset of the project, and they even take my minority shares in the capital of the the startups. Um, so, you know, often new entrepreneurs uh, start businesses, funding is a big issue for them. Uh, we want to support our entrepreneurs in any way that we can. So this is really intended to mitigate, you know, the lack of funding that they have from the outset. Um, so we also have provide regular pitch sessions with business angels as well. Um, it is really in those uh, kind of early stages of you know, launching a business where we try to provide as much support as possible to our entrepreneurs. Funding is really important, of course, but it's really important to have this empirical knowledge and uh, to share experience with people who are already uh, really successful uh, at uh, entrepreneurship or they have started their own companies. This is why I would like to ask you, Andrea, this question. Um, how, how did the alumni network actually benefit you yourself as an entrepreneur? Before uh, answering this question, I can also add something to the previous question, maybe. Okay, um, great. Which is, uh, well, um, in the Copenhagen Business School, there's also this uh, um, entity called Copenhagen School of Entrepreneurship. Uh, where uh, startups can go and pitch the ideas and uh, have access to free working space and mentorship and uh, like meeting with uh, potential investors. So there's also that that can be said on Copenhagen Business School. Um, going back to your questions about the uh, alumni network, um, so we are. Um, mm, what well, we are benefiting uh, of the alumni network in two ways. Uh, first of all, we um, network with uh, other entrepreneurs, and uh, since uh, in Copenhagen Business School MBA is uh, uh, really diversified uh, in terms of nationalities of attendees, uh, it's gr it's really important to also network with uh, uh, other foreigner living here in Denmark that started uh, their own business because, uh, you know, sometimes it can be a bit tricky to open a, a company and to start a company in a foreign country. So that's uh, really a, a, a really good point of the alumni network. So, like, getting possibility to go, go out and um, have a chat, have discussion uh, with other entrepreneurs and see how they are doing. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, also, through the network, we have some investors. 
uh, who, uh, as of today, work for uh, uh, venture capitalist uh, funds, and therefore, you know, like having uh, the benefit of uh, belonging to the same network, it's really, it's really important. And we have, we just had a case. I cannot mention, of course, names and details, but. Um, and now that we're uh, looking for some funding uh, in this company, we had a person uh, who was also an alumni who, with a whom who were already in contact. So it gives you uh, another credibility uh, towards investors. So it's it's a great resource for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And Olivier, how did you actually, uh, specifically benefit from the alumni net network of SSEC uh, executive MBA? Uh, yeah, if, if you agree, I will just get back to the question uh, about the funding uh, because I guess it's really an important point. Yeah, for, it for is. Uh, well, what I just wanted to mention is that uh, uh, I run a workshop in the Executive MBA now starting this year, uh, and, and what I get told by alumni or what I got told when I was doing the program myself three years ago is that you can you can't anymore get funding just based on your ID. So what we are uh, trying to teach uh, participants here at the ESSEC uh, uh, Executive MBA is that you have to, to get as early as possible uh, what we call the minimum viable project, which is a, a kind of proof of concept of your, of your business, uh, which aims to validate the most important hypothesis of your project but that you can put into the hands of your potential customers. And that's a way to help people to get funding early on, uh, because they can prove that what they're trying to do later on on a bigger scale is already uh, meeting success uh, based on what the, the users, uh, early, early users, early adapters uh, are giving as feedback. Okay. Uh, the, the, the alumni uh, yeah. network, uh, getting back to your uh, question, um, in, uh, the ESSEC alumni network is really a huge uh, network. And what, what, what's important is that more and more of this network is composed of people that launch their own company, meaning that you can get really uh, useful uh, advices from those people. And as in France, I, I don't know in other countries, but as in France, there is no uh, uh, a trend where big companies are trying to work with uh, startups uh, to launch innovative projects and to benefit from the uh, agility of the startups to move things inside the, the big company. And that can be a, a huge opportunity for startups uh, as they get money, they get uh, resources uh, to accelerate their project. And the, here, the alumni network is really important uh, in France because it helps startups to find medium or big companies that can help uh, small projects to get uh, really uh, acceleration. Okay, so it's really important to have a really big and knowledgeable pool of alumni that can uh, actually help you with the whole process of starting your own company. Uh, this being said, I would like to kind of focus now more on the specifics of the two programs. For example, if I take an entrepreneurship track, if uh, the MBA program is focused on entrepreneurship, would I miss out on the general MBA curriculum? Like, uh, would it be, would there be any important courses that I will, will be missing out eventually? Anna? No. Um, as I said earlier, entrepreneurship is uh, one of the three pillars of the program. Uh, it runs through the entire course, uh, the entire year of the full-time um, um, full MBA at Copenhagen Business School. Um, and the way we built up the program is that we've, we've divided it into three trimesters. So during trimester one and two, um, we provide our students with the basic business skills um, that you need uh, both as an entrepreneur and uh, no matter what kind of position you would like to take uh, in a company post MBA, uh, building up uh, basic business skills uh, through, uh, for example, marketing, economics, and management accounting. Um, and then once you've got this solid foundation to stand on um, in the last trimester, um, you can choose uh, your electives. 
Uh, and there, Andrea touched upon as well that he would say, just in business development, for example, and innovation management is another subject. So you choose so uh, five uh, maths and six electives out of the ones on offer, and there you could personalize your um, your MP experience. The um, MP here also finishes, and this is also in the third uh, trimester with um, the integrated strategy project, where um, you work in small groups with um, a company in the region. Um, and you there act um, as advisors to them as well. You work on that project instead of um, a thesis, which we find is a very practical experience connecting your whole MBA experience and your new um, MBA skills and tools um, to a real um, real life experience. Um, and you actually get something out of it at the end of it and the companies get something out of it as well. It's a very fruitful relationship. Thanks a lot. And Natalie and Olivia, you can probably give me an insight of what's the situation in, in, in the SAC and will I be actually missing out on some essential courses if I, if I focus myself on, on the path of entrepreneurship? Absolutely not. No, just like as um, with Copenhagen, our entrepreneurial project is integrated into the course. Um, so everybody participates. It lasts 12 months. Um, you don't miss out on any other aspects of the MBA program. Uh, you actually do have the opportunity to take additional electives on entrepreneurship if you wish, but in no way do you miss out on any of the core coursework by participating in the entrepreneurial project. That's actually great because uh, you get all benefits from both uh, entrepreneur the entrepreneurship focus and uh, the other courses such as let's just say leadership general management etc so uh, are there any tips or prerequisites to help admittance into your programs let's start with uh, Natalie uh, yeah um, <clears throat> first of all I should mention our program it's it's a, a general management program so it's not an entrepreneur, it's not a uh, MBA with a specialization in entrepreneurship, it's just that we have uh, a very strong focus on entrepreneurship within our uh, program. So in terms of tips or prerequisites to be admitted into the program, it's not, we're not necessarily going to favor entrepreneurs, that isn't the case. That said, we do offer a scholarship for uh, what we call an entrepreneurship scholarship for those people having already launched their own business uh, to incite them to uh, enroll in our program. So that is one aspect that can kind of give you a leg up uh, financially uh, if you need help with funding your EMBA. Um, uh, other tips for applying to our program, we, for us international experience is really uh, important aspect because there is a lot of teamwork, group work, and the, the, the teams are quite multicultural. So we are looking for individuals who have worked perhaps abroad, who are used to working in cross-cultural teams. Um, you know, in the modular format of our program, we generally have about 15 different nationalities represented. So I would say, you know, a tip to getting admitted to our program is to really focus in your application on the international experience that you've had. And of course, if you're applying for the entrepreneurship scholarship, it's to really outline the details of your business project um, and kind of explain why you think an EMBA would be helpful uh, when going forward, why specifically you're looking to, in, to do an MBA uh, even though you've already launched your own company. Um, okay, and Anna, could you perhaps give an insight or some tips to our audience that can help them in, if, if they choose to uh, apply for the full-time MBA in uh, Copenhagen Business School? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, demonstrating an entrepreneurial interest or experience is very much an advantage in the admissions process here as well at Copenhagen Business School. Um, I mean, we're looking for diversity in the class. We're obviously not looking to just admit uh, entrepreneurs or people with their own business, but an entrepreneurial mindset is the uh, key to uh, success in the program, and it's something that's very much uh, developed and taken to the next level in the program. 
Um, we're also, of course, looking for individuals who've demonstrated uh, excellence and um, progress uh, and um, achievements in their career, um, who have um, an international mindset and a, a will to grow and uh, a vision. Okay, and uh, could you perhaps, for example, Andrea and Olivier, you could share some uh, tips in general um, for your when you were applying for both uh, a second Mannheim Executive MBA and Copenhagen Business School that could help the future candidates. Let's just start with Olivier. Yeah, uh, I'm lucky enough to, to participate now in a mission jury uh, for the school, so I can see what's happening behind the curtain. Uh, what, what, what I would uh, advise uh, candidates to, to show is that you you got to be uh, give people uh, uh, the will to work with you. I mean, as uh, most of the work is uh, like any in, inside any company, inside any startup, you're working with people. Uh, so you, you have to to, to give people. Uh, the, the, the will, uh, they have to be eager uh, to, to share uh, with you, they have to be eager to ask you uh, advice, they have to be eager to see what you think about a specific point of uh, uh, any project. So um, that means that uh, based on, on, on human values, uh, you have to, to, to be a kind of smart enough so that you're always asking why Meaning that uh, you're always reframing the questions, you're always uh, trying to see things in a different perspective, um, and you have to, to be uh, some, somebody that's constructive, meaning that you, you, you ensure that things are uh, progressing towards what's your goal. Every time you're working on something, there is an outcome and there is a, a positive outcome. Andrea, would you like to add something else? Uh, yeah, so a lot of points that Olivier was uh, mentioning were, uh, I think, are really applicable to our program as well. Uh, let's just add that uh, I think two major things are to be open and uh, curious uh, and eager to learn more. Uh, I think that the um, uh, MBA class uh, can benefit a lot by people that are there to learn every day, willing to uh, exchange a lot of uh, background as well during the learning process, and as well as being as well as being open to, to new things uh, that m might come up and uh, new discoveries about yourself as well. So it's really this open mind uh, culture and in also like international culture that uh, really. Uh, help uh, a class to develop and uh, help everybody to get the, the most out of it. Okay, great. This was actually my last question. So um, I think that we managed to touch upon the different specifics of the two programs and to give a deeper understanding of how, our, how entrepreneurship and MBA are in fact compatible and can help a candidate to set him on, on, on the path to starting his dream business. Um, so this is why I would like to thank you all for participating in, in the Access MBA Spotlight. And I would also like to remind our audience that on Wednesday, October the 1st, you will have to actually the chance to ask your questions to the admission directors of both uh, ESSEC and Mannheim Executive MBA and Copenhagen Business School. And the time of the chat will be from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Central European time. So once again, thank you very much for your participation.